My name is Emma Mayerson, and I am the director of Alliance for Girls. <laughs> Before we get started, it is my pleasure and honor to start the day off with an extraordinary young poet, Sarah O'Neill. <laughs> Please take your seat, make sure your phones are on silent, because Sarah's words are powerful and deep, and we want to hear every one of them. Sarah is a poet and an activist. Her poetry has been featured on sites such as Upworthy and Everyday Feminism. Recently, she performed her poem, Overreaction, on the steps of the Alameda County Courthouse in front of thousands at the Black Lives Matter Millions March. We are so lucky to have Sarah here with us today. And without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to bring Sarah onto the stage. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me. This first poem is a poem I wrote about being mixed and um, how I've sort of dealt with my mixed identity. It's titled Mixed, Not Exotic. I would like to give a big fuck you to the next person that says I have a nice complexion that only wants to get close to melanin when it's golden, my skin is too often an invitation for white folks to get comfortable. Why do you get to feel so goddamn comfortable when I have to negotiate the terms of my safety every time I enter a room? My mother is Moroccan, with skin white enough to turn red if she spends too many hours in the sun, my father, was black and German, with skin two tones darker than my own. In the summertime, we both turn a hazelnut hue, a color only replicated by Marrakesh clay buried deep in the earth. My heritage has never been a source of shame, but to others, it causes confusion. I become mixed blood mystery, too difficult to wrap their minds around. So, which side do you identify with? As if I'm supposed to choose one. No, no, like, which side are you more comfortable around? This is the meaning of living in limbo. Welcome to the crossroads where you can be everything and nothing at the exact same time. Oh, wow, you are so exotic. Oh, wow, I was born in the same city as you. <laughs> I'm exhausted from having to explain this exotic, this almost dark skin and almost curly hair as if our ethnicities came with a rule book where combinations too complicated are simply disqualified. So, so what are you mixed with? People. People who aren't multiracial always want to tell us mixed folks how to feel in our own flesh. Stop trying to tell me that by simply being in interracial relationships, you are somehow dismantling institutions of racism when you know damn well women still can't love the misogyny out of men's veins. I am the aftermath of magic but that doesn't keep people from treating me like I don't belong in this land. When people ask me what my name is, I bask in their disappointment when they don't hear something foreign enough to bring culture to their ears. When I wore hijab, people called me a terrorist. Now people mistake me for Latina. Either way, I'm told to go back home. I wish they just meant my family's apartment down the street. But I know 
Back home is an imagined land people wish they could exile me to. It's easier to destroy something you don't understand than it is to embrace it. This next poem is dedicated to my mother, Fatima. She is the one who taught me what it meant to be a strong woman. My mother left everything in the water. Her brothers and sisters, the few photos of her mother. This world has trained me in the artistry of loss. My father plucked from earth. Mama, broken, open, fighting to keep us together. What her own mother could not sacrifice, she poured into my body. Even with God, she finds herself deserted in this unholy land. I wonder how much longer faith will keep her bones intact because everything else is crumbling. For weeks, I watch their faces circulate media feeds. Dia, Yusur, Razan, my stomach churning as if I had swallowed the Mediterranean all of its bloodied salt water in one gulp. In the fifth grade, Muhammad's name was crossed off his campaign poster. Terrorist scrawled over it with red sharpie like a river of blood. When my mother asks about this, I say nothing. But in public, I stop responding to her in Arabic. Three years later, I meet this suppressed memory on a bathroom stall that bound my name with terrorist in black sharpie. Something in me broke, and when I told the principal, he said he'd have it washed off right away. I said, I've already erased my mother's language from my tongue. A white man can wipe out a classroom of children without his religion being dragged through the dirt. This is a privilege most do not have. A white man's hatred can carry a body count, and he still won't be called a terrorist, let alone a hate crime. This is a privilege most do not have. The day I got news from Chapel Hill, I called my mother, told her I wanted to come home, how tired I was of being stranger in my own flesh. My mother saves Zemzem water in a small bottle, wets my mouth with its divinity so that I find myself returning to God. I am my mother's daughter, an ocean exhausted, but still fighting back. Thank you.